Hypothesis testing. What comes to mind? Test statistics, critical values, confidence intervals, p-values, the list goes on. We won't bother spending time going through a lengthy textbook example to confuse you further. But there is an intuitive and more simple way of thinking about this subject. If someone makes a claim about something, our aim is to develop a framework with which we can assess whether this person's claim is reasonable or not. We will imagine a person who comes up to us and claims that they've drawn a number at random from a distribution. They have taken this number from a standard normal distribution. That is, a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a variance of one. The number this person claims to have drawn from this distribution is one billion. Hearing this, we think that the probability of picking one billion at random from such a distribution where the mean is zero is very low indeed. In fact, we think that the one billion must have come from what's known as the tails or the extremes of the distribution. We may go even further and think that it's more likely that this number, one billion, came from a normal distribution with a different mean, a lower mean. But that's still all very vague. What we know so far is that when someone makes a statistical claim like this, we may have an intuitive sense of what's likely or not, but that to add more rigor to this framework and make it more objective, we need a formal rule for when a number is in the tails of a distribution, when it's unlikely to have come from that distribution. Unfortunately, there is no hard science that can be deployed to make this call for us. We have to decide on an arbitrary set of rules that will allow us to make decisions. These rules are based on value judgments, which is why this subject can be so confusing. Next, we define the steps for creating this formal decision framework. The first thing we will do now is to define the notion of a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is a specific statement on a random variable. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the number 1 billion did indeed come from the standard normal distribution with a zero mean and a variance of 1. What makes our previous statement specific is that we have pinned down the distribution from which this number came. A null hypothesis is usually presented like this. The next step is to pick a level of comfort, a confidence level. This is like wiggle room that we are comfortable with, a measure of the uncertainty we face when dealing with these kind of problems. We may pick a comfort level of 90%. What does this mean? It means that if the number from our example, 1 billion, falls into the tail of the distribution, the upper 10%, then we reject the null hypothesis. We say that we don't believe the 1 billion has come from the standard normal distribution. This comfort level, 90%, again, is arbitrary. It could be anything. 90 and 95% are just the ones commonly used. If we make this value too small, then we will reject the null hypothesis many times, perhaps too often. But if we make it too large, we will never reject, even when we should. So there is a trade-off between the level of comfort and making the wrong call. The third step is to calculate the critical value under the null hypothesis. We now calculate what's called the critical value. Let's denote this by x. It is a cutoff point. To the right of x is the tail of our distribution, and to the left is the acceptable portion of the distribution. This x, the critical value, is calculated under the null hypothesis as if it were true. The fourth and last step is to compare your random variable to the critical value. In our simple example, we compare our figure of 1 billion to our critical value, 1.28, and decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. If 1 billion is larger than the critical value, we reject the null. If it's smaller, then we cannot reject the null. So, we've now seen that there are a few stages of this process which are arbitrary, picking the confidence level and calculating a critical value. 